Hey, everybody. Just as I was leaving after having issued my uh, 22 minute uh, response to the Miami Dolphins hire of Mike McDaniel, I got a tweet uh, from a surprising source. Um, I, that's the only way that I can express it. My friend Gina Lang, so who has been a longtime reporter for ESPN. Uh, we met at the NFL owners meeting in Orlando uh, because she actually recognized me. I didn't know what she looked like, frankly, uh, but apparently she'd been following my uh, blogs and logs about Jameis Winston and how he had been poorly treated uh, throughout his uh, career uh, for racist reasons. At any rate, um, she responded, she issued a tweet, which basically said to me, um, uh, that, uh, she said, did you just say that Mike McDaniel isn't black? And what does him being from Aurora, Colorado have to do with anything? He's not responsible for what the police do there. And he's been coaching longer than Sean McVay. My point is this, that his, I didn't say that Sean McVay's resume wasn't super thin at the time he was hired. He was, it was. The simple fact of the matter is, first of all, the situation. Timing in media is everything. Timing is everything in public relations. Timing is everything in the law. Timing is everything in our existence. We are in the middle of an ugly firestorm where the National Football League has this look, this pose, that with respect to the hiring of head coaches is racist. The National Football League, Gina, as I said before, and I will say again, should be in the mold of the NBA where black players routinely flow from front office of one organization to the other, as is true for head coaches giving room for brilliant people like Steve Kerr to come along who had a light resume, but had a brilliant approach that no one saw coming. And we know what happened there, but, but still have room for coaches like Jason Kidd to get to take their chance or others, some players, some not. Okay. Some players, some not. All right. Some players, some not. That's different from the NFL, Jim. It's vastly different, my friend. And if you don't understand that, I'm hoping you understand that after my <clears throat> presentation response to what you put out. I, first of all, as one of the people who was at the Twitter launch party was first created, Jack and Evan and um, um, Dick first, you know, started it at the Mighty Bar in San Francisco back in 2006. Okay. Um, and yeah, one of the handful of black folks who was there, frankly. Um, th that's Jack's site. Even though Jack stepped down, I regard that as Jack, Jack's, and Evans to a lesser degree. I have my platform. I own Zinni 62 Media. I own Oakland News Now. I am not going to respond on his platform, save for the job of directing you to my network. I use StreamYard because StreamYard syncs very well with WordPress and YouTube better than Zoom. So let me pivot from the brief technical lesson to this one of race. It is in the context of the Brian Flores lawsuit that the 49ers made their decision. And rather than choose a fully qualified African-American coach of legendary status like Jim Caldwell, the Dolphins, because I said 49ers, I meant Dolphins, the Dolphins an organization under the hot light of legal scrutiny now, 
by a lawsuit, unfortunately. And I happen to like Mr. Ross, by the way. This is not a criticism directly of Mr. Ross. There's some things I'm surprised about, but hey, so be it. It is what it is, and it's unfolding. The bottom line is, in the middle of this firestorm, in the middle of this hot light of scrutiny that's placed on the NFL and the Dolphins, we have a man in Coach McDaniel who no one can name the innovation he brought to the National Football League. Same with Sean McVay, okay? Who just so happens gets, boom, coach like that after one year as offensive coordinator, okay? Okay? Yes, I know there are people who think they can strike lightning on a bottle, but Gina, my issue is that lightning in a bottle should not be viewed as coming in a package that is white. There are plenty of bright, some, in many cases, super bright African-American coaches and front office people in the National Football League or people who should be in the front office. Okay. It is now top heavy. It is too top heavy to be ignored. Coach McDaniel, when Coach McDaniel comes out and says he's black, that's, that's great. But he hasn't done that. He has allowed himself to be presented as biracial and in earlier accounts going back to January 27th as we don't know what his father looks like. Do you? Do you? I noticed that all of a sudden in terms of a content analysis, we went from Biracial, don't know what his father looks like, to he's part black and black after he was hired. That looks like PR game to me. It also looks like a cover-up for the real problem. The real problem is that this was done knowingly to confuse the issue. This was done in the middle of the hot light of a lawsuit to present this type of discussion. You took your tweet down. I acknowledge that. You are angry. I am disappointed that it was you who was angry because I thought you thought differently. And so the, obviously there's some things there that I don't understand. You would have been farther better off just calling me rather than this. I don't have your text, but my number is all over the place. Deliberately so. And I'm not a hard person to reach or talk to. And I don't mean text either. I mean talk. And I said it just like that. Talk. Not just not talk, but talk. Okay? In a deliberate Eastern parlance. What is going on that the league is doing and allowing to be done is against the basic tenets of the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution drives diversity. It calls for it. The Constitution calls for all Americans to enjoy life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We now have a top-heavy section of people in the National Football League who be treated in a way that is arguably not constitutional. And they're black. That is wrong. We're in a... We're, at a state today, Gina, where a person can say, just say something. Look at the case of Auburn and the matter of Auburn coaches, Brian Harson's assistant, Miss Crochet. Miss Crochet is his assistant. Just because she is his assistant, young, white, and pretty, doesn't mean they're having an affair. But hey, sexist folks think, oh, they've got to be having an affair because, oh, come on, knock it off. Get a life. You know? It is wrong to just say things. And 
by those comments, which have nothing to do with the truth, think that you can replace the truth. You can't. The truth is we have a race problem in the NFL. The truth is the NFL is much like the kind of league that Al Campanis might want to see with one black head coach. I don't know who Al Campanis is. He's the person who on Nightline, Ted Koppel, and I watched it as it happened with my mouth agape, saying that people who don't, who look like me, do not have the requisite qualities to run a corporation or to start a startup as I've done, or program, or basically be a leader of an organization. And he said it with a straight face. Think of the mentality of a person who thinks it's okay to make a statement like that on national television. He got fired, rightly. He did it on national television. He did it without, as Deion Sanders, Coach Sanders might say, without stuttering. He did not stutter. He did not hesitate. He said it. And it was ugly to know that regardless of what you do as a person or how you talk, because you're black, someone else who is in a position of decision-making who doesn't look like you, who's white, says they want somebody who is not black and white or looks white. Even though that person is not qualified. Some again, again, I repeat, a friend of mine told me that I said, so tell me about Mr. McDaniels and his innovations. As one who was taught the fret flex defense directly by Ernie Stautner, the late Ernie Stautner. Yes, I'm talking about me in 1979. Okay. So my point, 78. So my point is, tell me. You tell me. What is innovation or innovations are? Tell me what he has done that puts him on a level with Dick LeBeau, the father of the zone defense, or, excuse me, or the zone blitz, excuse me. Or tell me, for that matter, what he has done that puts him on a par with Tom Landry, the father, the creator of the 4 3 defense, just really by asking Stan, Sam Huff to stand up. And then he created the flex defense to refine its ability to stop the run the daylight as popularized by runners, but by like in particular Jim Brown, because coach Land, you couldn't see how one running back could so dominate a football game. It didn't make sense to him. The flex defense was his attempt to stop Jim Brown and the green Bay Packers offense, which featured the green Bay sweep. So tell me, what has he done? My friend who I won't identify for this, said earlier today, well, he did the vertical pitch back. Excuse me. The vertical pitch back was done by David Shaw at Stanford, okay? Years before, he put Ty Montgomery, a wide receiver, in as a running back. Why not call David Shaw and throw a ton of money at Coach Shaw and get him to leave Stanford? Good luck with that. He's sitting on a $500 million endowment. Smart guy. I love talking with David Shaw. Conversation we had, as you can see here, Zenny62 on YouTube, is about the type of blocking style and approach that was used by Cliff Kingsbury, because I was wondering if Cliff was going to stick with the standard stand-up anchor vertical set, as opposed to something that was more hybrid. Dave didn't really know the answer to that. We had a fantastic conversation. I love talking football with Dave Shaw. I've given him plays. He told Jason Cole, this is on video, because Jason said, well, I gave uh, Coach Shaw a set of plays that he actually used against Oregon. Yeah, I did it as a Cal Bear. All right? I didn't do it because I'm a Cal Bear. I did it because I like Dave. I like people I can talk football strategy with on a complex level. I can do that with Coach Shaw. I can do that with Coach Gruden. Yes, I said that. I've known Coach Gruden since 1998. There's a reason, Gina, that Coach Gruden had Will Kiss wait for me in the lobby of the hotel at the same NFL owners meeting where you and I talked. 
I gave him a play that he started using later that year. And it set the tone for an approach that is in a sense the answer to what Sean McVay put out. Particularly for those who may not have mobile quarterbacks, but kind of want to make the move around a bit. I don't want to go too deep into that. And then I created something called the Eagle Offense for the NFL. I just gave that earlier last year to the Raiders. They used the formation from it. Um, I guess you could believe it was against the um, twice. They put Marcus Mariota in the Z position, in, in Z position. Why they did that, I don't know, but they did. Foster Moreau ca caught the pass for uh, 21 yards in a first down. I have never designed a play that has not worked. You hear what I'm saying? I have never in my life, going back to 1976 at Skyline High School in Oakland, when I designed a pitch pass that went for 37 yards in a first down. I didn't run it. The quarterback did. I designed it. I have never designed a play that didn't work. There are a lot of black folks out there like me. A lot. Stop insulting us. Knock it off. We know how to program. We know how to create. We know how to present. We're all over the place. Some of us, most of our friends are white or Jewish or whatever. We're American. That's what you get. Enough of this. So I'm glad you issued the tweet. I'm sorry you, I guess, don't understand. But I'm not going to do it in two dimensions. You've got to talk to me. And I said it just like that to, uh, to get what I'm saying. It can't be done in like text. All right. That's the other part of the damage of our society today. That's why I did it in video form. Perhaps you should do it in video blog form. I think you'll find it quite refreshing. There's my answer. Subscribe to Zenny62 and bookmark oaklandnewsnow.com. And that ends this broadcast.